regular and long-term speaker in the Python community around the world. And today, he will share his experience in Apache Bing. And before we start, I want to remind you, you can ask questions in our Slido and make note in HackND we provide. And you can find those link on our website uh, in the schedule page. If you don't find it, you can ask people next to you. So now, let's welcome Kurt. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, so happy to be here again, physically, in person, in PyCon Taiwan. I think last time I was here is like uh, four, four years ago or something, and later it's all remote. So today my topic is how to design a successful project with Apache Bing, actually intern project. I will explain why I mentioned intern here later. Um, so today's talk, because I got some uh, reviewers feedback when I submit proposed the proposal, and uh, I found out that uh, people are more interested in talking about data instead of the, the, the experience side, how I manage the project. So because of that, I will spend most of the time about data processing and just a little bit time about intern project. But uh, after this talk, if you are interested in either topic or both, uh, just find out me maybe here or somewhere in a, in a okay. venue, just uh, we can talk whatever topic related to my talk. Uh, about me, uh, you can check my GitHub page, uh, or maybe just search my name, Kurt Cho. You can find out all my past talks and the uh, slide, uh, including today's slide and the uh, code. So today's code is all on Colab. Uh, there's one supposed to be a public Colab you can access. So check out either of them, or you can go to the uh, official website. The slide is also updated, uploaded there. All right, so why do I want to talk about Apache Bing this year? Uh, let's actually back to one of the reasons uh, motivated me before. Uh, so Apache Airflow was a super popular topic in the past uh, few years because there are some uh, community contributors in Taiwan. And so when I joined PyCon Taiwan a few years ago, or maybe actually last year as well, I just asked online in the Apache Airflow place, I asked people just, uh, hey, has anyone heard about Apache Beam? And I found out like actually, no, nobody answers me, they know that. And that makes me feel like, uh, okay, so maybe people are shy there, or maybe I should be a person to deliver such a thing to the community. So that's one of the key reason I want to share this topic. Um, so I want to, maybe I want to firstly ask one thing, is how many of you here actually heard about Apache Bean? Okay, so very few hands. I can see probably 10% uh, or less than 10% in here. That's good. Uh, I don't actually expect you to know anything about Apache Bing. Instead, I want you to feel it in my talk. Um, so data talk, to be honest, uh, I talk about whatever things about Python for a couple of years. This is my first data talk. So you probably see like my background is not like uh, most of the data scientists uh, or, or those uh, handling data as people's background. I'm more just like a normal engineer, regular engineer, work on software, work on a service. So talking about data is too boring here. Let's talk about the interview for a software engineer. And so in here, I'm going to just uh, give you exactly the, the inter possible interview question you may receive in some tech company. Uh, in here, don't, don't look at the top word, it's too complicated, just look at the, the data we have. So interview question is supposed to just be like an input and output, right? So you got some input, and uh, the interview interviewer basically ask you to clarify input, and later just uh, find out like how to, uh, what kind of logic you try to build and ask you to implement, and eventually generate output there. And uh, basically that's how the interview process work for the kind of uh, non-senior non role people ask such an interview question. And uh, so in here, what I want you to just think about here is, uh, simply just we have an input table A, and the table A contains the hash key to the index. And the inter input B contains the hash key as well to the data. And the thing you will notice is that uh, the hash key and the index is actually case sensitive. So we, the hash is based on the case sensitive key, uh, index, sorry. And the output here, what I want you to do is, um, you still have a hash, but this hash is based on case insensitive index. So if you find out like uh, uh, there's an index in table A, then you try to uh, convert it to a case-insensitive one and uh, grab the data from the table B. 
That's exact question. And right now I'm, I'm thirsty now already, so I'm going to ask you to think of this question for 20 seconds. Twenty second passed. <laughs> All right. I hope I hope something already on your mind. You don't necessarily need to code at this point, but I, I think I think if if you are like me, we speak Python, you're supposed to come up with something like this. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to go through this later. So just uh, assume like uh, you probably come up with something in your mind like this. If so, likely you pass the interview as well. Likely this will be some phone screen in the tech company. Like probably you passed it. So what's going on here is pretty much you need to define the, the, the interface, accept two table, and eventually generate one out, output table, right? So the output table would be like this. You, you, you basically just define uh, there's a case insensitive index to content table. And then uh, in this table, you start to go through each uh, index, e each table in the first index table one by one. And so firstly, you go through the PHP the first thing, and you try to just uh, grab an index from the table and uh, lowercase it and uh, generate another hash. And you found out the cache is different, so you need to use that new hash. And then you start to check if PHP, uh, is this hash key is using another table. If so, then what you need to do is just uh, grab the data from it. So you got the first thing is hash uh, PHP, the lowercase one, to the data. And same for Python. And in this case, Python is actually already lowercase. So you go through it, you just find out like, okay, the hash key you generated is same as the original hash key. But it doesn't matter. Right? You can pick either of them. Anyways, just uh, you still check if Python is already in the second table. And yes, you found it. So again, put that into the output table. And the third one is C++. You start to do the same thing. You got a lowercase the hash key. But next thing you found out the problem is that like, uh, oh, hash key is not actually in a table B. So what you need to do is probably just uh, do some kind of new content and uh, grab the, this C++, the C++ new content in there. So eventually you just got this table. I hope you here in past the 20 seconds got a similar answer I just uh, talked. Uh, if so, again, you probably passed the phone screen for some tech company. Uh, by the way, this problem actually is a kind of a real world use case. We often have a situation we need to produce key with, uh, produce a tape, different table uh, with the same hash key and uh, the data access policy could be different. And so we, we allow people, some people access a certain table, but we don't let them know the actual uh, key could be uh, generated from what. Yeah, so that is the question here. Okay, then move on. Uh, too boring, right? We just talk about the kind of uh, classic thing and uh, probably you know how to implement in the interview. But let's talk about a, a bit for, a bit forward, just uh, how do we handle modern data processing, right? So look at the code we just implement here. What problem did you see if you handle so-called modern data processing? All right. So you found out like there's a big problem is like all the table input here you, you, you set in your function. It's a thing so-called in-memory uh, table. So all the table here contains all the data you need and the all output table there as well contains all the data you will output. And so what if you got a super big data there? Your table cannot, uh, your, your, your memory size is too small to fit the data you input. And you will hit the issue so-called insufficient memory resource, right? So that's exactly the first problem. If you handle a modern data, it usually, usually like it's really big. So you cannot really handle that through uh, this kind of logic. Your program wouldn't be able to execute or finish the data completion. Or uh, even if it can be executed, it will be super slow. So that's the first thing, and let's talk about the second thing of metadata processing. So you can imagine like right now you are in the kind of basketball game, and as every player just starts to shoot the ball. So the data is continuously updated, it's like a kind of streaming service. So in this case, you can see like, okay, we have a table here already, but somebody want to update the C++ index 
with some, some, some new content. And in here is, we, we call this modern data, in modern data processing, we call this unbounded data. So the data could come anytime, you need to handle it, and you cannot actually rerun the entire program to accept another new table A, new table B, and rerun everything. That's the second problem, unbounded data. And because we talk about streaming, you can imagine another scenario is like a, somebody just play chess in the chain somehow. And the chain right now just enter a terminal. And so what happens is like in the terminal, there's no Wi-Fi, so there's no access. You cannot upload your score or your movement to the uh, some service somewhere else outside of the chain. So that, that could ho co cause a problem, so-called auto order problem, right? Because somebody maybe maybe next ch next chess movement is something, and uh, that movement and another movement, which one is first, which one is later, that could be something hard to handle if you're uh, you don't have a good way to really maintain the sort of the time and the, uh, how to make sure your systems correctly handle that. So let's do a kind of short recap here. Modern data processing has the three things we we care. Uh, first is massive scale, big data, right? So data is too big, so you cannot handle under any, any single instance. And second thing is unbounded. So data keeps coming and requires to handle them when receiving them. And of course, because the data is unbounded, so there's also the problem is out of order. The event time of, and the process time is different. Uh, below is a kind of academic paper, talks about that. You can see that um, the, 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 the first line in the right-hand side that line is so-called event time. So event may happen ideally in that way. But when we process the event, we, don't, we are not necessarily processing them at the time they happen. So that there's always a gap between them. And second thing you can see here is like, uh, sometimes we process the data, but some of them may come later after we process. So there's another, another problem here in modern data processing is we need to be able to process this sort of out of order data. So the goal for modern data processing for any sort of uh, academic paper or some, some sort of technical solution are all related to these three goals. First is it, you need to handle the data correct or correctness in a certain level. Not necessarily to be 100%, but you want a very correct data. Second thing is the latency. You want to process the data still in a, under a certain threshold, like say every 20 seconds, every one minute, you want to get some sort of correct enough data. And finally, it's like you also want the cost to be kind of acceptable. Right, so I believe like people sit here and may say, okay, hey, my company use some solution for this problem, my company use another solution for that problem. I, I know, I know that. Uh, there are tons of different ways to solve this kind of problem. But today, our, our main character is in my talk title, right? It's called Apache Bing. So I just talk about this. Don't, don't argue with me that like there's other better solution. I mean, that, that's out of my, my talk scope. So if you search Apache Bing's website, there's an introduction like this. Sorry, you need to have what? Use case, right? You have some problem, and then you need to build some business logic for that problem. And they provide us some wonderful SDK in whatever languages. And of course, Python is part of them. Here's PyCon. And uh, uh, there's a what? Abstraction, just the... Uh, uh, you can run your, your program in any sort of uh, places like a cloud or you can run your local runner. You can have your own service to run it. And the general, uh, eventually you just generate some uh, sort of output and that's supposed to solve your problem. That's the website say, so this kind of Apache bin to handle the batch and streaming processing. All right, again, this is kind of like a, I'm not a data scientist, I'm not a data person, so this is too high level and probably too boring. So move on, again, this problem. We talked about this problem earlier, we talk about this problem again now. Exactly the same problem, we need to handle two table and generate this out, output, output table. I don't like you to think another 20 seconds about this problem anymore. That's because I don't expect most of you can write Apache Bing. So, but if, if you speak Apache Bing, you probably know what I'm talking about, yes. So here is like, a, if you speak Apache Bing, you are supposed to come up with this kind of logic uh, in Python. All right, again, I'm, I'm going to talk about all the code in detail one by one, but line by line maybe, so don't worry about that. Initially, what you need to do is just uh, set up the pipeline and set up the kind of configuration, where to run the pipeline, what kind of parameter you want to add. So that's out of scope, and that's not important for this talk. We, I want to say is like, if you look at this logic here, 
the number of lines is actually not so different from the number of lines we just implement for that interview question. Yeah. So that's a very cool part is Apache Bing can generate some sort of logic uh, also in a kind of very really short line of code. That's very important thing. And so what happened here is the first step we do, you may notice one thing is uh, the input become a thing so-called index collection, not table. We don't call it a table anymore. And there's a reason behind that is because we don't do such a kind of a regular dictionary kind of type of the key and the value pair and try to access the key to search the key in another table or such a thing. Of course, there's still such thing, uh, but uh, that's too deep to the technology, so I'm not going to talk about that. So in this step, what we are doing here, you can see, we have an input table A here, and what we are doing here is we try to convert or com kind of generate another intermediate input uh, input table A. So it's a kind of lower case, hash key by lower case. So the so original hash key is the same, but the, our value set here is the uh, lower case the hash key. Sorry, lower case the index. So why this matters? That's because there's a thing, a very important thing is we want to be able to run this in different instances. We don't want to put this entire data into one host only. So to do this, we need to access the data in parallel. So what Apache Bing or what kind of this kind of map reduce thing does is just uh, grab a piece of data under one instance, piece of data under another instance and make every instance can grab a certain amount of data under their memory size limits and be able to run it. And uh, in here, it's because the data can process in parallel, and you can see that, like, uh, okay, PHP can convert to this one, Python can convert to C++ can convert to this one. All sort of things can be done in different uh, instances. They are not necessary to, to be one of the PC to run it. And that's also the reason why we call this data collection instead of the table, because we don't do in the regular table uh, calculation in that way. And the next thing, this is a big chunk of code. Uh, in this big chunk of what we are doing is here is actually under this flow. So we have three tables. Now one is intermediate table. The other two is original input table. And what we are doing here is just we try to group, group, group it by key for this. And because they, have all, they all have the same key field, right? They have hash key, hash key, hash key. You can see they are all the same. Maybe your number is slightly different, but they are all the same. And you just need to group by, by, by key for them, all of them, and generate a certain output table here. So if you look at this output table, you find out like uh, this is exactly the data what you want eventually. But of course, we need a detail. So let's take a look at detail. So what happened here is like, uh, uh, you'll find out like uh, the first thing is so-called group by key. So group by, by key, what it does is, okay, after we generate this intermediate table, we start to grab all the, um, each table contains the same key, we grab them together. So we got a PHP cell, Python cell, and C++ cell. They contain their own uh, own data because each table may contain certain data related to them. Again, this can be run in parallel in different instances as long as the data is ready in each table. And okay, we got this table now, what's the next? This is the data we care. So we need to write another function called maybe rehash. So whatever, you can call whatever name for this function, but you can see the logic here is actually pretty similar to what I wrote initially. So initially I wrote the, the question, uh, for the interview question I wrote logic to generate the, that, the, the value for the output table. This is pretty similar logic. Uh, maybe that you could, some people knows that there may be some deduct things and the plus creation thing, but pretty much similar. And you can see each cell is ready now somewhere in your Apache Bean clusters. So once the data is ready, you can start to run this maybe rehash function and generate this ultimate uh, answer you want. And eventually, you just need to uh, combine them together and you just got the final output you need. Yeah, I think that's a kind of a very short introduction of the Apache Bing. Uh, hope you have a sense of that. And one thing I do not want to point out is that uh, the most uh, difficult part for using Apache Bing is actually not writing logic for the most difficult part or the most challenging part for anybody who first time experienced this, probably experienced MapReduce, is to write, draw these so-called bin flow things. You got some data as an input 
And what kind of intermediate data you will generate based on what API you use in Apache Bean. And the, what eventual data will be generated through this entire flow. And this is a pretty critical part to actually use Apache Bean in your daily life tasks. If you are interested, like if you are experienced Apache Bean person, you want to know more about it, here are some additional resources I highly recommend you to check out. Uh, three papers are all published by Google. And you can see the first paper is 2010. It's pretty much like a two, few years after MapReduce paper. And also it's already 13 years ago from now. And this paper is very easy, actually. I, I think compared with the rest of the paper or com compared with the most of the paper I read, this paper is relatively simple. And it only talks about uh, how Google use Fluent Java to handle their bounded data. So we talk about the three problems in the modern data processing. And it only covers the first one, big data problem. It doesn't cover the unbounded streaming problem and all of other things. And uh, so, so because of that, the second paper in 2013 come up. I just talk about meal wheel, and that's a thing to how they use the meal wheel to handle streaming services. So, uh, for example, like uh, when people use Google search, they just type a certain keyword, and uh, there's a peak. Like some keywords, a lot of people type the same keyword, and they want to detect such a peak. And that's the uh, essential reason of this paper. And it's mainly talk about streaming data. And Apache Bing is not based on these two, but based on the final paper. And the final paper is actually based on the above two paper. It's called data flow model. So this paper covers both bounded and unbounded data. If you are interested, I highly recommend you check uh, through your plan. Uh, if you maybe just interested in big data problem, the first one should be sufficient. It talks about how the optimization is done under the hood. And so you, you may, if you are interested in that, what's the difference between MetaReduce and Apache Bing? Check the first paper, you will understand why. And if you need more examples, uh, so in the website, official, official guide, there are two things. One about a text analysis for bounded data and the online game real-time scoring system for unbounded data. You can check it. And of course, uh, it's already 2023, and uh, this is no longer a new topic. So if you want to know somebody else talk about Apache Bing, check out the PyCon APAC 2018. There's another, um, person working Google at that time, maybe not now, I don't know, uh, is talk about the grocery store's barcode system. So it's kind of really practical how Apache Bing can be used in such unbounded cases. Okay, let me drink a water. How much time left now, by the way? Seven minutes, okay, it's good enough. Like, uh, yeah, as you, as you may see, like, uh, I don't actually have that much time to talk about this. I'm going to talk about a successive, a successful intern project. Uh, by the way, like, uh, this is actually a kind of follow-up talk I, uh, on top of my PyCon US Education Summit talk. Uh, I let, uh, there I talk about a topic called what a great software engineer intern host looks like. So if you are interested in how to be a good intern host, uh, find out me later, or maybe check out my slide there. Uh, there's no recording. Actually, there is, but the quality is very low. So uh, unfortunately, no such a good video, but I think the slide still mentions some of the content I want to talk. And today, we will only focus on one of the factors I mentioned in that talk, how to be a success, a great software uh, intern host. So it's about business impact part. Um, so. To talk about business impact, we need to know one thing is like uh, um, how the business value is generated of a project for the company. So we can think about the like, life cycle of a project in companies like this. We need to firstly face the thing called ideation. We need to think about like what problem we have, and uh, then the next thing is try to analyze, analyze run analysis and uh, prototype it. And uh, if we figure out like okay, it works, then we prioritize it. And maybe we don't actually launch it right after that, but we run some experiment to do some A-B testing to assure like the, the service is really something user needs and eventually generate a business value. And because of that, let's think about like uh, what's the best part for the intern to work on. Ideation, of course, no. Like uh, you don't expect you hire the intern like uh, right, right after they join, they start to say, hey, we should do this for the company, benefit the product, right? So, Usually, hinder host or the company come up with a certain project, 
And then uh, you need somebody to work on it. So in this case, analysis prototyping could be something intern can work on. And also here, intern is not necessary to be intern, can also be a new hire or relatively junior engineer in the company. So yeah, in this, for in this phase, uh, I can tell you it's like, uh, usually the intern host or the mentor needs to spend quite a lot of effort with the person who, inter who work on the same thing. Uh, that's because there are a lot of uncertainties in this stage. And uh, because of the high risk, it also means that it can produce some high business impact because you figure out something like you expect it may work, but you are not so sure. And the next thing is productization. Of course, this is also one good thing because uh, the effort is generally low for the intern host or mentor because you know like uh, it works. So you just need somebody to finish the implementation. And uh, mostly you expect uh, some just a regular business impact, but still it's a kind of good place for intern to perform. And experimentation and lunch, Yes, it's possible, like maybe some intern can reach this stage to do this kind of thing. But what I can tell you is that like, most of your coworker coming in this leadership should understand like those domain knowledge requires quite a lot of experience. And it's usually it's kind of, you, the intern or the new hire got some support from their coworker can reach this stage. So usually it's not recommend because intern can probably got just very minor impact there. And why I talk about this, I mean, I'm talking about Apache Bean today. What, why, why, why is this? What, what does this matter to Apache Bean? All right, so let's talk about just one more last, this last slide here. Intern new hire, you can think about like they have limited time in the company or they, they, they had Im limited time in the company. And uh, they have probably limited te technical knowledge about the company stack. And Apache Bean, what which I just mentioned today, it's a kind of thing by simply just uh, go through today's talk, you can understand it's actually not that difficult to learn it. Especially the amount of code you need to write, it's pretty similar. So if you if you hire a person, the middle problem, just let them implement a kind of regular interview answer. And then they start to learn what is Apache Bing and convert that sort of answer into the Apache Bing flow and uh, build the answer for that. So for the intern project here, what do you need to do? Or for the new hire project, whatever. What do you need to do here is just a really well-defined data problem. As long as you have a data problem there, you, you have some input, you want to figure out that output, then you can generate certain business value there. And that is the reason why Apache Bing here plays a really good role for making the successful intern project. Yeah, of course, not only Apache Bean, there are some other things can apply the same rule, but here I just want to highlight uh, this is what I did last year and right now for my interns. All right, that's the slide. Uh, take away today. Uh, we talk about in-memory data processing. Uh, obviously, uh, the interview question, and hope you think about answer in 20 seconds. And uh, modern data processing, uh, that's the thing that we know, like there are three factors for the, what, how we call a thing modern data. And we talk about Apache Bing is one of the solution for it and also how Apache Ping plays, plays a role in the project life cycle. And finally, it's a homework for you or a promotion for Apache Ping here, uh, is that check out this collab here. Uh, to, this collab is very simple. You have a Google account, it's supposed to be able to just uh, play each cell like a Jupyter Notebook. Just play each cell, go through it, that's it. You will got all, everything you need and uh, you just feel, figure out like uh, how amazing, how easy, simple to use Apache Bing for the problem that you already know how to solve uh, through the regular Python code. Thank you. What's up? Oh, no, not this one. Wait, wait. Okay. I mean, now we will invite her to answer some question you send out in Slido. And the first one is it costs heavily to maintain an app tripping infra in house. I believe if you ask this question, uh, general answer for you is just uh, like uh, other uh, cloud infrastructure seller, just use cloud. 
So if you have the capability to, to maintain your own infra, you shouldn't have this question. If you ask this, generally, you probably better to use the cloud solution first. And I know it's not a good answer, but that's probably how the uh, individual developer will answer you like this. Yeah. And next question is, in any case, we better to know when you're using Azure Bean with streaming data? Or for example, how to prevent data missing, duplicate data processing? All right, it's a very deep question. Uh, okay, I think the, what I told you earlier in my slide is there are three goals, correctness and latency and uh, cost. So we talk about the correctness here. Uh, what I can tell you is that there is, uh, when you handle the streaming data, you always need to think about the, the actual data you want to handle is how correct you want the data to be handled. Right, it's not necessary to be 100%, but it can also be you want the data super correct, but uh, then you need to sacrifice like the time you handle it because you may need to reprocess it again to assure like every out of order's data is correctly handled after that. And uh, you ask me how, right? Uh, Apache Bing supports that because they have a paper behind and the paper, in the paper, they actually talk about, I think, 11 scenarios for both batch processing and streaming processing. And Apache Bing itself, the API contains the corresponding implementation for a certain sort of demand. So check out that. I think you will be able to learn like how, what kind of level of the uh, correctness you want and also the latency you accept. Yeah. And next up is, are there any good tools to design a data flow that is the key to use being well. Are there any good tool to design the data? Flow? Okay. Um, I don't know actually. What I do simply just uh, we use the whiteboard, and uh, we we write such a. I, I share with you right. That there's a slide talk about the, the beam flow. We just uh, write down, uh, especially for junior people. Uh, like uh, my first data, and actually even till now I still do the same. I do write down what data I have in what format, and uh, one cell by cell, and I draw a flow, and I check like uh, after this flow, this data is transformed to another format. And this is the way I handle it. Is there any good tool for that? Maybe there is some tool better than whiteboard or, or the design doc, like uh, just, but uh, in my case, I think, uh, uh, this part is pretty one off, and uh, you need to think very carefully. So once it's done, um, that's pretty much you can implement. And uh, if, if you want to move a bit forward, it's like optimize it. Drawing that sort of thing helps you to understand next time to when you check the design doc, you'll find out this flow and find out which part you can optimize. So. I don't think this is a good answer for you. I, I, guess, I, I assume like you probably expect me to answer you like there's certain cool tool able to run the flow prototype for you, but I don't know anything related to that, unfortunately. Uh, due to the time limitation, we can answer the last question. The last question is, Okay, let, let me translate this into English first. Uh, so this means like we have a, such a big data. How do we uh, optimize uh, the flow maybe to handle it? Or, or how do we optimize the index for the each intermediate table to handle it? That's a very, very good and practical question. Um, I don't want to expose which company I work for, but my company is very big. and We do have something internally try to optimize each pipeline. And we also have some sort of a larger scale code change to really handle, uh, to really see like what kind of optimization can be done for all the pipeline in general. I can tell you this is a still a very super difficult question. And uh, there is no general solution. Current solution is something they will specifically dive deep into a really high cost pipeline in the company, and then try to see which part of the pipeline can be optimized. And in general, my experience for the optimization is mainly for like how to, if, if you convert from table A to tab, intermediate table A or table B, can you kind of change the way you do a conversion or can you drop the number of key in advance? And that will help you to make your data small enough uh, during the data processing, that will make your pipeline process faster. But uh, from what I know, again, there's likely not no such a kind of utopia like some 
automatic way to detect which part of the pipeline can be optimized. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see, we still have many problems left, but uh, you can still reach out, Kerr, have a little talk. So now, finally, let's thank you, Kerr, again. Thank you.